Q3 showed a revenue of uh, 45,000 Swedish kroner, still very limited, uh, as we do not have a large scale uh, sales force or marketing activities at present, and we are still um, pursuing uh, regulatory approvals both in uh, in in Europe. So um, our operating expenses though are down to 6.7 million Swedish kroner, which and this is where we have been focusing a lot. Uh, lately in order to get the company uh, to a lower cash burn and, and aligned with our new strategy uh, to work through partners. Uh, so, so, so what we have done is we have um, reduced the staffing level to 13 people, uh, only the sort of uh, very critical um, R&D staff and a few administrative people uh, are, are, are on board now. And we also moved out our, our quite large uh, lease for production and, and laboratory facilities in Battleup. And by uh, so, so, so now we have reduced our rental payment and our salary costs significantly. At the same time, since we completed the uh, development of our CRP capsules, uh, our cost for external consultants related to that is, is also gone down. So, so um, that is why we can show a 43% uh, reduction in OPEX uh, in Q3 compared to Q1. And we still will be showing even further reductions when we move into Q4. Uh, as we will, they will start to see the effect of the um, rent de decrease and the full effect of the staff reductions at that time also. Um, so uh, that's our primary focus on, on the cost side that has been there uh, last fall. So the, there's not much to say about the distribution of the revenue. I mean, it's, it's so small numbers uh, this year. So, um, but it's, it's, uh, from different countries, I say outside of Sweden, I think it's, it's the most important takeaway from that. If moving on to the balance sheet, uh, our intangible fixed assets are 105 million. Uh, that's actually a slight decline from uh, the uh, level that we had on the balance sheet in Q2. And it's basically because we now are uh, writing down or, um, more of our capital R&D than we are added adding based on uh, on the um, cost cutting that we had and and the fact that we are um, less active on 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 a new uh, capsule development uh, internally than we used to be there's also a year on year decrease in the, in the tangible fixed assets and the long term liabilities and that is the termination of the lease for the production fa facility we had a 10 year lease and uh, that was uh, quite uh, a substantial liability actually uh, on the IFIS on the balance sheet. So we are happy to take that out since uh, our new strategies certainly would never uh, have see us taking any benefit from that lease. So uh, that was uh, an, a, a very, very important move for us in, in sort of bringing the company in, in a better shape for tomorrow. Um, finally, uh, then I also just wanted to mention that, that when we look at the short-term liabilities of 53.7 million, there is a significant part of that 25.5 million Swedish kroner is a prepayment that relates to the FIT R&D project. That, uh, that was a fund for uh, innovative diagnostics that uh, uh, paid us to develop a multiplex ca capsule for SARS and uh, and influenza uh, test at the same time. That project is on hold right now, uh, but we have confirmation that, that we will not be asked to pay the money back, even though the, um, um, the um, R&D activities, we, we never completed the project as, as intended. Basically, we, we, uh, it was decided to, to put the project on the hold. Uh, this means that we need to now work with our auditors on, on the right way of, of taking this off the balance sheet. But but we have a confirmation that we will not have to, uh, that this is money that stays in, in queue life. So uh, the, the real short-term liabilities would actually be only half of what we see here when we uh, adjust for that. 
Then moving on to cash flow, we had cash flow from operations for Q3 of a negative 10.7 million um, and changes in working capital of a negative 3.8 million. Then we had uh, cash flow from investing of 3.9 million positive and then 6.9 million from financing. And that gave us a total cash flow of, or cash burn for Q3 of minus uh, 3.6 million. And that gives us the cash at the end of the period of 5.6 million. Um, included in that was actually the convertible loan that we received in Q3 of 4.7 million. Um, so, so, and with that um, in place, we are in, we, and as we also, um, communicated to to the um, market and then that that gives us the operating cash we need for the end of this year and into q1 next year um, and that is when uh, because we as, as also indicated that we have we expect uh, to, uh, we will be receiving 8.5 million of um, uh, tax credit from the danish tax authorities related to our, our r&d activities last year uh, in November. Then moving on to the significant events uh, that has happened during the years. I was going over a lot of it already, but uh, I will just sort of quickly go over what we had accomplished in 2023 so far. So first of all, we launched the Eco CRP assay and the Eco Innovate so open system. Uh, and, and presented that in at uh, the AACC uh, show in Anaheim. Then we also completed the rights issue of 57.7 million in April 25th. Then we, and this is still ongoing, we initiated our Asian initiated an arbitration against us related to the agreement we had with them for distribution of our SARS-CoV-2 uh, capsules. Uh, and uh, basically, they want us to pay unpaid invoices of 0.8 million that is on the balance sheet today. Um, and against that, we said, yeah, if, if we will we'll be happy to pay, but uh, only when you have paid us the 2.2 million um, of missed profit from the unmet uh, minimum purchase commitment that is on the agreement. Um, so, and, and we are happy that, that the... Um, Arbitration court in Finland has, uh, has accepted uh, to, to treat the two cases as one. Uh, and we believe we have a strong case. We have just uh, filed uh, all our arguments um, earlier this month uh, and expect a resolution on this case uh, um, at, in uh, early 2024. So, so um, uh, and... Um, as, as mentioned, we believe we have a strong case, and that, so that could pos uh, possibly be an improvement of our cash situation once that uh, gets uh, settled. Then uh, our TO2 warrants uh, uh, outcome was announced, and uh, as, as the warrants were significantly out of the money, we had a very modest signing of 0.17%. Of, uh, as mentioned before, we has, have also taken on a convertible loan of 4.6 million, Swedish Krona, and uh, finally, then we have, and this is actually, this, I think, one of the most important things that happened is that we signed the LOI with the uh, Hyperbio technology for uh, exploring uh, options for for uh, a partnership going forward, uh, and that I uh, will talk a little more about that when I come to after Q3 events. Um, because when we look to after the end of, uh, of the balance date of Q3, then we had the outcome of the TO3 warrants. Again, a warrant program significantly out of the money. So very limited, the signing only 0.02%. So no cash injection from that. Um, but uh, apart from the savings that uh, I mentioned before, then we had good pro progress with the partnership agreement on hyper with hyperbiotechnology. We traveled there in uh, for our first visit um, uh, last month, and uh, we're happy to see, first of all, that they are a very, very capable organization. Uh, they are already today selling 
uh, their own uh, dev uh, diagnostic devices uh, to hospitals in China. They have uh, several versions of that, but the, the main uh, one is, is uh, a device that, that uh, can do a full uh, test uh, portfolio, including CRP and CRP are by far the, the test capsule that they are selling most of. The total sale of, of, uh, of tests in, in, into China expected for them in uh, 2023 is 25 million units. So it's, it's quite significant compared to the 100,000 tests that we have uh, sold uh, uh, until date for, for our um, PCR tests. Um, the, the agreement that we are going to do with them is, first of all, we have received quote for, for, for them to manufacture uh, our capsules and our ego collect. Uh, the pricing is uh, significantly below what we can purchase for in Europe, um, primarily because uh, we uh, uh, they have they own the full uh, supply chain for for capsule production, including a plastic molding uh, factory, uh, and uh, so so we are look, uh, sending a team now out to look at the quality of of uh, what they can do, and once we confirm that that lives up to our standards. Um, from a full technical perspective, then we will start receiving, I believe, the test uh, production runs of, of, uh, of capsules components. Then they are also going to work uh, on, on a regulatory approval in China to be obtained in 2024 for three different test assays. And this is interesting because uh, the, the Biochemistry uh, behind the test that Hypo has in their current portfolio, and you can check it out on their homepage, uh, is very similar to, to the type of biochemistry that we are using in our test capsules, which means that most, we believe actually, the full program, test program they have is very easily adaptable to the ego platform as well. And then finally, uh, they are going to commercialize uh, uh, the ego platform in the Chinese market. And we expect this is going to be based on uh, that they will be selling uh, the products uh, and paying royalties for the uh, tests uh, while we will be manufacturing and, and shipping the um, devices to them. We expect to complete the, the final commercial agreements uh, on these three in these three areas in uh, 2023. Uh, so we have a, a, a binding commitment from both sides to as we enter into 2024. So and so we are very happy with the, the speed that this is happening with and we are also very, very happy with the um, potential um, uh, volume outcomes that this has. Uh, basically, before we were, were working with, with Hypo, we could not see a way into the Chinese market that is very, very big uh, relative to the European market in terms of tests, etc. So so, um, so this is definitely to add a lot of uh, upside to our future outlook when, when we see it. And, and, and with um, uh, very little financial commitment from our side since um, Hypo is going to uh, be in charge of making these things under the agreement. Also, it gives us a quick route to develop further tests to, to our platform since we can, if we utilize the, the chemistry and the technology behind uh, Hypo's current test um, portfolio, then we believe we can do this very fast. Um, and then finally, sort of, we moved to the new offices uh, in, in Symbion on November 1st. Uh, as mentioned before, this gives us lower rent, which is also good. So I think we are in a good shape to, to move into 24 and start executing uh, on our new partnering strategy uh, with uh, focus on, on what we're going to do with uh, Hypro. And with that said, I think this was what I wanted to take you through. I know that there are quite some questions already, as, as Klaus mentioned, so I'll be happy to take those now. Well, thanks a lot, Caspar uh, and 
sorry about the, the technical uh, flaws, but uh, we solved it and, uh, and we gave a good impression of what uh, what happened in Q3 and what we should look into in, in uh, 2024. So, so with that said, um, Kasper, uh, let's start off with the questions and uh, to the audience, you're more than welcome to post more questions. First of all, Kasper, you mentioned the loan you received um, during the quarter. Uh, and you also mentioned uh, the, the money you get from the tax authority. Um, in terms of hyper, are, are there any milestones besides royalties connected to, to signing the deal? Um, and with that said, how far does your uh, current uh, uh, liquidity situation take you into 2024? Um, so let's let's uh, uh, when we talk about hypo then i would see as i mentioned uh, there will be the regulatory approvals to be obtained in china which would be milestones uh, prior to the royalty um, that is as, as so much we know now based on what we have in the little eye uh, everything else i think is uh, is i mean we're still negotiating on on the um, terms of, of of the agreements uh, but we will I'm looking very much forward to be able to share the content, uh, or part of the content of, of these agreements once they are signed. But of course, until we have them in place uh, in, in the final version, it's too early to 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 talk about the content in more detail. Um, and and yeah, talking financing, we have financing into Q1 uh, 2024, uh, and we are looking into uh, and. Uh, uh, plans to to address that Kasper, um, so 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 and that's fully understandable and if if uh, milestones are uh, connected to approval we will probably see uh, things coming uh, late uh, 2024 normally it takes time even in china to get, get get approval for things yeah i think yeah first of all it, it's important to understand that that uh, uh, especially with the ivdr um, change that happened in Europe, uh, the, the Chinese FDA approvals are less cumbersome to achieve compared to the, um, so, so the number of tests required, et cetera, are fewer. And we look at, that was part of what we covered on our first trip to China. Um, and Hypro has um, Good experience in working with the Chinese uh, FDA on a, of, of obtaining these approvals, so uh, so so it can it will come in in uh, in uh, 2024. When in 2024 it's too early to say because I, I as I see we don't know it yet. Um, oh, that's fair enough. So 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 the other measures then the loan uh, and and the five point something million you have uh, on your yeah. back right now and uh, and uh, the money you get in return and best case you win the arbitration case uh, even though you're of course competent and you should be uh, with your cost cutting program what what would your your new burn rate be in, uh, in 2024 if you could uh, tell a little more about that uh, I, I, it, it will be uh, I think you can you can work from what we uh, it will be um, below what we have right now um, yeah. I, I will not. I, I will not uh, mention a specific number um, uh, as as uh, we are still negotiating. That part of there's some moving parts still on 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 our plan for for um, 2024. So so um, um, so 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 I, that will come when when we're ready to share it. When will you see the full effect of the of the cost cutting program, Casper? Uh, is it Q one or Q two? It will be Q one. Um, okay, good. So, so you will probably address it in connection with with your full year report. As I mentioned, yeah, because basically the, these uh, on on the salary and this, and the personal cost side, we see the full full effect already in Q four, yeah. and, and then the only sort of major item that's left is is the rent uh, where we will see the effect uh, starting yeah november 1st right so 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 that um we have one month of high rent 
still uh, in in the um, in the numbers for um, Q4. So we will almost be there in Q4. Um, but but as a slight uh, slight improvements in terms of, of, of cost size, and then then basically we project that we would then would say and 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 the reason why I'm not saying more is basically then we start looking into to how will we build up then and how does it make sense? But now we are we are, we are caught down to us to a, to a level where we are in control and we can then add cost that that uh, have, that there's a good business justification for on our new strategy. Uh, before that, we basically had commitments that it was costly to get out of, and that that work is done now. And unfortunately, it takes quite a while, uh, given the labor legislation and 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 the the lease. Uh, we had to work on in in uh, in um, in, uh, in better up. So so uh, now we are the, the new lease we're into it has a, a only a three months binding period. So so our agility, sort of financial agility, is significantly improved now. So so we are in a much better better shape when it comes to that. Thanks a lot, Casper. Uh, Let's change focus a little to to uh, your rollout in in UK and Ireland. Could you give us a, a brief update? You 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 are you are not C approved in in Europe, and I hope uh, most investors know that. But uh, the company uh, company's focus so far is the wellness segment. Could you? Could yes, you I, it, 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 it's important. Yeah, exactly. So so we are not C E marked for commercial use in Europe. So to to be specific, yeah. we are the, the devices C E marked. And and we are pursuing them and working with uh, Northlands Hospital uh, on 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 um, finding uh, uh, on creating the data required for the professional use and or ultimately the home use CE mark in Europe also. So we're still working on that with partners again, but here it's it's the hospitals in Denmark uh, that we are we are working on to achieve that, um, and. Uh, Basically, we are working with our partners in in the UK. I think that uh, and 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 finding the right way in terms of regulatory um, approach what uh, what we can do with the current um, state of the product and what requires further approvals in in UK. And 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 it's important to understand that UK is not covered by the. Uh, IVDR anymore, so so they have their own regulatory approval set up. It's that's it's very close to, but it's not the same. So 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 um, uh, we have good interest still from the UK, uh, as you can see from the uh, sales numbers. Not large revenues yet. Good, thanks a lot. And uh, and um, you've been attending quite a lot of of conferences recently. But but, but uh, and that's probably more. Question from for your colleagues, but I know you you're a small organization, Casper. What what is the feedback you get on your products? And two, is it sufficient to have only one test in the market, or you, do you need more tests to get a, a decent upscale in in your sale? So yeah, so the feedback we get on the market uh, on uh, is 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 very good. I would say first of all, people really like the product. They like the concept. I think I think that they see a lot of potential also in the fact that this is a connected device that enables sharing of data uh, with other systems and and with um, uh, medical advisors uh, etc so 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 that the, everybody sees a huge potential um uh, to be fair i think also in in the home use one uh, uh, test is not enough for people to be willing to invest in that until unless they're very very specific interest in a, in a certain uh, biomarker and, and the market for that would be very limited so so it, it's important to understand of course key here is that we need to develop a broader test range uh, or portfolio for the device and and that's why again I want to and, and and it seems like I'm, I'm sort of uh, highlight the the um, Hypro uh, partnership, they are unique in the sense that they have a broad test portfolio that's already working on their device with, uh, with a technology that is very similar. What we uh, add to that is basically uh, what we have sought relative to their devices. Our device is significantly smaller. It's cheaper to manufacture 
and um, we have uh, through the freeze drying uh, technology also found a way that it can be distributed to homes without being uh, needing a, a cooled uh, distribution um, uh, network, which means that uh, sell, sales to to consumers is possible in a much cheaper way than than if you had if everything has to be refrigerated. So um, so, but but basically. Through Hypro, we believe that this uh, our, uh, us getting to a broader test portfolio will happen much sooner. Uh, and you can see basically that Hypro is taking on to finance uh, doing the test portfolio up to, to three uh, tests first for the Chinese market. We expect that the two tests and that, that they will be adding to the CRP uh, will be uh, first of all, can be taken into the wellness segments quite easy, and and also will be prepared uh, so we can uh, file for for um, the uh, IVDR approvals for these also in Europe um, by adding data to what has happened already. But protocols and 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 all technical um, issues will already have been solved in order to uh, achieve the Chinese FDA approvals. Thank you. How fast? How fast? Because when we when we talk the content of the capsules and the capsules, as I remember from interviewing uh, Chamas a couple of months ago, when 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 you first announced the hypo, you're going to hold the intellectual properties, um, and um, isn't that right? Uh, uh, and, and yes, of course, that, is, how, that is what we are. Yeah, yeah, of course. But how do you secure those? Uh, properties in relation to the Chinese and to how fast can you take a new capital to the market? Yeah, so so um, we, we we protect the intellectual property through our, our, our uh, patents that we've taken out for, for the technology. Uh, of course, uh, our ability to enforce a patent in the in China alone uh, is going to be limited um, so so i think that and that's where it, it it becomes important that we actually have a partnership with uh, hypo where we are targeting um, more than just them selling our product um, so so they see benefits in 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 working with us and also it's quite quite clear from what we had discussed already that uh, our technical knowledge both when it comes to manufacturing uh, uh, of the device and and when it comes to developing it and and porting assays onto the device is is very much needed hypo cannot do this on them uh, their uh, their own they, they they need us and that's why our all our rd teams is traveling there in early december and um, um, this is the plan uh, uh, but they will not travel until we have the agreement so so um, um we hope to to have, we, we were targeting having the agreements in place earlier than uh, before they travel, but we already received the invitation. So I think that that this is this is moving along as 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 we want. Good. So, so and how fast can you take a take a new capsule to the market? If if we exclude Hypro, we just focus on the European. I think market. it's it's be between six uh, to to do the uh, so so there are, there are two elements in that right there there is us doing the tests. Uh, and uh, that will take six to nine months to to perform the uh, tests required, uh, and then there is the processing time from the regulatory uh, from notified body, and that I cannot speak to because uh, the IBDR right now is is uh, it, it, there's a lack of of resources under the regulatory body notified body to, uh, to do this. Um, uh, so so so. It's it should take six months after that, but uh, it, it's out of our control. We don't know. Okay, that's okay. Um, maybe one final question here. Um, even though we're a little delayed, uh, time is less. It's more or less up. Casper, if you look into two thousand twenty-four from a mm -hmm. point of view, what what should investors focus on besides the hypo deal? Because that's a game changer. I know that. But 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 if we look into the European market. And your strategy in Europe should we see double sales numbers as of today. Um, hopefully, we should see more. Could you elaborate a little on that, Casper? Uh, 
I think so. So what we should be looking for there is uh, once we receive the CE mark, so we can start. Uh, so so we have, as, as mentioned, there's a lot of things happening right now on home hospitalization. So also then there was a question related to that. And and part of the things that we are working with the uh, North Shore Hospital is actually looking into um, uh, whether um, the eco device can be help uh, achieve better results for home hospitalization. So, 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 um, so um, results from these studies um, and and uh, progress towards the European CE mark would be something I'll be looking for, uh, and then. Um, a uh, doubling of our sales revenue uh, numbers as today will is not <laughs> um, it's not even going to take us anywhere. We need much sig more significant. And I think that um, on this uh, that 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 will happen only when is what we see now. Only when we have the CE um, or, uh, or a broader portfolio um, and and marketing financing and financing to 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 do marketing on this. But uh, so so. Um, um, that would be the CE progress towards regulatory approvals in, in, in Europe, uh, because that's uh, what's going to take us there ultimately. Good question. Um, thanks a lot for, for, for all the questions. And uh, thanks a lot, Casper, for participating in this event and then answering all the good questions uh, from and the audience. One, one, sorry, because there was one thing that forced to lose me. Then, then, of course, also other partnerships that that uh, could be announced um, would also be something to look into i cannot mention anything specifically but uh, but that could also be something that will uh, significantly change the the outlook for the company Fair enough, Kasper. thanks a lot for that so so with that said uh, first of all um Kasper, thanks a lot for participating um sorry about the the technical issues uh, we solved that and uh, thanks a lot to the audience for all the good questions um and uh, uh, with that said, I will close today's session and uh, enjoy your morning.